What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the media screen inside of the 2022 Kia Telluride. Going through every little feature, how to use factory navigation, setting up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, going through all of the different features as well. It's going to be an in-depth video, but let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun, and see what's going on with this media screen. Right, next up, let's take a peek at the media screen. So quite a few things to cover off, but first and foremost, as you can see there, we are in a guest mode by default. We do have the option of changing users. So if we've got multiple people using the vehicle, we can easily set up multiple users in order to be able to do that. And we can easily log in and out as necessary. We've got our basic home button along the top there. And then as we scroll between different screens, we start off on the main screen there, we can easily swipe between different screens and this thing is very responsive. But let's go through some of the basics. So we've got our basic map there. So as you can see, we do have a basic map screen there. We can press the button along the very top right hand side in order to be able to hide the split screen. So we can either hide or show it very easily. We can jump back to the home screen there if we want to. Hopping back inside, we've got our basic compass, we've got our navigation sounds, and then we can either increase or decrease how close we are there. And then we can easily just drag or drop there as well. So it is very responsive there, which I love that fact. We've got our save, we've got our parking, we can set different things as, it does, as a destination as well, which is really nice because if we kind of just drag, we can just pick a random spot. And then if we want to, we can set it as a destination. And here we go. So we can start guidance, we can add a waypoint, or we can do route guidance options. So what do we want to avoid? So we can avoid freeways, toll roads, ferries, carpool lanes, and a few other things. And then we can recalculate based off of our preferences. But if we simply just hit start guidance, start now. Okay, so as you can see there, we've got our guidance currently going. And one of the really cool things is that on the actual heads up display, it's going to let us know what's going on with the actual guidance itself. So as we hop inside there, we can just kind of make it out. But if we take a look there, we can actually see what's going on with the route guidance. All right, now by pressing the menu button again, as you can see, we've got a few more options. So we've got our basic for a route, we've got our reroute, and then our route options. Nearby point of interest icons, we can save this as a favorite. We've got our traffic, displaying traffic, display off. We can pause our route along the bottom there as well. We can also resume very easily by pressing that button. So right now by pressing this button along the very bottom, we've got our route, nearby point of interest. We can save this as a favorite. We've got our basic traffic. We can turn the display off as well. And then we can also go back to our menu. We can do our pause route as well. So we just hit a simple pause route. We can resume it very simply if we wanted to. Looking at our navigation menu, All right, we've got our places button there, which gives us the option of easily searching for an address. We can do voice if we want to search that way. We can also go by GPS coordinates, literally just by typing the coordinates in there. So we've got some flexibility when it comes down to it. We've got our point of interest icons. So we've got a series of different things that we can have show up on the map as well. We can look at our previous destinations. We've got our address book, local Kia dealerships. We can cancel the route out as well. So that route that we had set up earlier. So we're canceled out, jumping back into the home screen, back into navigation. We've got our route overview, edit route, and we can, we've also got our route options. And then along the very bottom tree, we can also set up some different addresses. So we've got our home work address, things like that. And we can easily set that one up if we'd like to. Moving back, we've got our phone. Now adding in a phone to the vehicle is also a very straightforward process. Let me show you how that process works. And we're actually gonna start with an iPhone. So starting off, we're just gonna hit phone first. Okay, and we, we want to make sure that we've got hands-free calling and Bluetooth audio, so we're just going to hit OK there. Turn Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. On your device, select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. And we're literally going to follow the direction. So we're just going to make sure that Bluetooth is turned on on our phone, and we're just waiting for vehicle name to show up, which Kia did, so we're just going to press the button there. Okay, making sure the PIN numbers match up, they do, so we're going to hit pair. All right, allow contacts and favorites to sync. Yes, we're gonna allow that. All right, and we are connected. Really that simple. If we hop into phone for a second here, watch this. So we've got my download, my contacts that are downloading. We've got my recently made phone calls. We've got my dial pad and things like that. We've got my messages. So a lot of flexibility when it comes down to it. And we can easily dial this way. We can press our voice button along the top there as well, or we can press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to be able to go that route. And we do also have the option of setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's also a very straightforward process. Literally what we're gonna do is take our USB cable, plug it into the port that says USB. We're gonna take the opposite end of the cable and literally just plug ourselves in. Boom, and watch this. Okay. And while using CarPlay, some information is gonna be shown. Do we want to allow CarPlay with Kia while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow that. And we're just gonna hit next. And what we can do is we can use the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to be able to activate Siri, but we need to make sure that Siri is active in the phone settings first. Hitting okay there. 
jumping into CarPlay, and we are connected and it's across this beautiful split screen. As you can see there, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, we've got Waze, and all of them can be used directly through this middle screen. So if you don't want to rely on factory navigation and you want to, you have a map that you want to use instead, you've got the flexibility to be able to do that. Now, this is the main screen. If we want to jump back to the Kia screen again, we're just going to press the Kia button there, and that jumps us out of this. But we do have some flexibility as well, which is a cool thing. If we go to setup for a second, We've got vehicle navigation and a few other things. If we actually go to our device connections, we've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. But in order to make changes here, we do have to physically be disconnected first. I'll show you why we're doing that in a second. So I'm disconnected for a second, but if we jump into Apple CarPlay, we can also use split screen. So watch this. We're gonna plug back in for a second. CarPlay's back up, so we hit CarPlay, and we've now got a split screen. So we've got this screen set up instead. So this is gonna be the same for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we do have some flexibility when it comes down to it. All right, now setting up an Android device inside of this vehicle is literally the exact same process. So what we're gonna do under Bluetooth connections there, we're just gonna go Bluetooth connections. We've got my iPhone that we've already connected, or we can add a new device. Same idea, we wanna make sure that we say okay to these preferences. Turn Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. On your device, select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. Okay, it's the same thing. We want to make sure that these match up, which they do. So we're just going to hit OK. Perfect. Make sure that the pin numbers match up, and they do. And we are connected there. So really that simple to be able to set this thing up. And as you can see there, we've got both phones connected. We can set one as a favorite as well if we want to. We can allow access to my contacts there. So as you can see there, everything's downloading to the vehicle. We can easily de delete devices as well. But I want to show you something for just a second. So we jump back to our home screen. We jump into phone. And very similar to what we saw when the iPhone was connected. So we've got dial pad, we've got the name of the phone as well. We can also easily swap devices. So if you've got multiple devices connected, we can press the swap button along the top there in order to be able to connect to different devices. But very similar to the Apple side of things, we do have the option of setting up Android Auto and it's also done very simply. So same idea, we're gonna take the USB cable, plug it into that first USB device, opposite end of the cable, we're just gonna plug ourselves in, boom and reading USB. So Android Auto would like to. So we're going to hit next on Android Auto. Okay. And <laughs> look at this. Three, two, one, and we are fully connected. So really, really nice there. We can press the settings button in order to get to some basic settings as well. So root guidance options, things like that. We can jump into our main menu there. So as you can see, we've got podcasts, phone messages, we've got a notification center and our Google alerts. And one of the cool things is that very similar to the iPhone side of things, we do have some flexibility to be able to go through Android Auto settings, very similar in order to be able to customize the launcher settings. So on our phone, if we just do a quick swipe up and we just search for Android Auto, we've got our Android Auto there. And as you can see, we're currently connected to the Kia. We can look at previously connected vehicles. We can customize the launcher. So if you have a tendency, oh, I don't know, maybe you want your podcast at the very top, you want your phone near the very top as well, we can easily drag and drop. But unlike the iPhone side of things where it was dynamic, we do have to actually shut down Android Auto and relaunch it in order for those changes to come into effect. But we still do have the flexibility to be able to customize the launcher. And as I said, we do have that split screen, but we can easily jump back into the settings screen in order to change it out to that full screen setup instead. We've got our Google Detection, Google Assistant, and a few other things on the Android Auto side of things, which is nice. So customizing the launcher, and then very same idea, if we wanted to get back to the main screen, we just hit Kia, and we're back to that main screen again. So we can navigate as we go in order to be able to get to different things like our radio, things like that. Now, in order to be able to remove a phone from the vehicle, very straightforward, we're just gonna go to our setup. We've got our device connections, and we've got our Bluetooth connections. And as you can see, we've got both phones currently connected to the vehicle. If we hit delete devices, we can mark all, we can select individual ones if we wanted to. And then all we're gonna do is just hit delete. Okay, so as you can see there, first phone is deleted. Second phone, same idea, we're just gonna select, delete, yes. and that second phone is deleted. So it really is that simple to be able to add and delete phones from this vehicle. All right now, moving back to our home screen. So next up, we've got our phone projection, which we've already seen that. We do need to have a phone connected for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. We've got our voice memo. So we do have the flexibility to be able to create voice memos directly through this vehicle, which I think is kind of a cool feature. 
Moving back, we've got our valet mode. So valet mode, when we turn that on, we do actually have to have our UVO services connected first, but valet mode, what that'll do is that'll actually lock the screen out. So a valet driver wouldn't be able to go through in order to be able to look through our settings and things like that. We've got our passenger talk setting as well. So we can figure out what's going on with the back speaker, which is actually kind of neat. Like if you don't want to yell backwards at people to let them know, hey, what's going on? You can kind of hear a little bit of an echo going on right now. And that's literally because it's taking my voice from the front microphone and talking to people in the back. So if you want to yell at people without yelling at people, you've got the option of being able to do that. So that is such a crazy feature that Kia's got this option. We've got our quiet mode as well. So quiet mode, what that's going to do is that's going to change the volume levels for everything. Rear climate control. So if the kids in the back are fighting over it, we can lock out those climate settings if we want to. We can also set what's going on with the climate there and we can have it going to the face, feet, etc., or a combination. And we can also change the settings out there as well. Moving down, we've also got our HD radio. We've got our basic radio, which look at this, look at this, look at this. Ah, I love it. It's so old school. It's so nostalgic. So I love the fact that we've got this option and we can literally kind of adjust from there if we wanted to. So kind of nice. Let's actually do a quick audio test. All right, so that is pretty dang cool and it's because of the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system inside of this trim level of the vehicle. So really, really nice there. And as you can see, we've got a series of different presets and we can easily save a preset just by changing to the station that we want and then just by starring it out there as well. We've got a few other options there. We can easily seek that way if we wanted to go that route. We can change between AM, FM, Sirius XM and other connected devices as well. Last up, jumping into our setup. This is where we have some more advanced settings. So we jump into our vehicle settings first. We've got some different volumes. So we've got our warning volume, driver attention warning, and our blind spot safety. Our drive terrain. So as we change modes, do we want an alert to come on? Yes or no? We've got our cluster. So we've got our illumination, which means that we can have the vehicle automatically determine how bright it should be, or we can manually adjust. And we've also got a blue light filter on there as well. We've got some basics for climate. So we've got what's going on with our climate. So our auto, auto ventilation. Is it automatically going to dehumidify? We've got some basic climate features as well. So we can lock out that rear control. So we've got a few different ways that we can kind of lock things out and change things around with our seat. So we've got our seat position change alert and we've also got our heated ventilated seats features. So obviously if your car didn't have heated seats or ventilated seats, whatever the case may be, this wouldn't show up, but it is nice that we've got some flexibility there. And then we've also got some basic for light. So we've got our ambient light, which is going to show in certain parts of the vehicle as well. Moving back, we've got navigation settings, which we've already seen some of these, but we've got our basic for our maps or display size, point of interest icons, basic information. We can auto recenter the map as well. Looking at guidance, so we've got different intervals. We can show guidance distance. We've got basic alerts, so our camera alert and different alerts as well. So previous destinations, we've got our fuel price info, user data, GPS information. Moving into some sound settings now. So as you can see, we've got a few different things. So we've got our quantum logic surround, bass boost as well. We've got our positioning of the actual sound. So if you've got multiple people in the vehicle, you can send it off to the center. You can have it just for the driver, etc. And you can fade out this way as if you'd like to. We've got our sound tuning, so treble mid-range bass. We've got some basics for guidance, which this is an interesting one because parking safety priority. So all of these different things. So if you have any of them selected, like navigation guidance, if an upcoming turn's going on, it's going to lower the audio volume in order to be able to play what's going on with your upcoming turn. So you've got a little bit of flexibility there. And then same thing for distance for different sound settings. So we've got a, a startup volume limit. So if you had it cranked before you turn the car off, it's not going to be cranked when you turn the car back on again. So it is nice that we've got that setting and then a few other things as well for the radio noise. Next up, we've got our device connections, which we've already been through the device connections. As you can see, we've got our Bluetooth connections, which nothing currently connected there. We've got auto connection priority. So if we had multiple devices, we can select which one is going to connect first. So I love the fact that we've got that option. Moving back, we've got a series of different user profiles. Voice recognition is an interesting one because we've got a few different modes. So beginner essentially means that we're going to get notifications every time we make some sort of a change. So if we, let's say, change radio stations. Please say a command. 97.7. Now listening to FM 97.7. Okay, so we got a notification letting us know that it was changing the station. Comparatively, if we hit expert and do that again, 94.9. Yeah, it changed the station for us, but it didn't tell us. And that's one of the nice things about this expert mode. We just won't get as many notifications. 
problem there, we've also got our screen theme and layout. So if you want a different, a different look, you've got that flexibility. So when we've got a screensaver going on, nothing showing up, do we want a digital clock, analog clock? So we've got a little bit of flexibility there. And then we've also got our split screen. So what happens with the split screen? When's it gonna be showing? So you've got some options there. Moving down, we've got our basic button. And that's a cool thing because we've got two different buttons. We've got one on the steering wheel, and then we've also got another one just a little bit further down the, cent the center stack there. And that's going to let us know what's going on. So we've got our steering wheel mode button and then our custom button. So we can figure out exactly what's going on when we press that button. So it is nice that we've got a little bit of flexibility there. Moving into our mode button. So as we press the mode button on the steering wheel, it's going to switch between all of these active modes. We've got our UVO, which is our connected vehicle. So the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem, which means that we can use it for, uh, we can literally use it as a hotspot for a number of devices, but we do need a data only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to set that one up. But it is nice to know that we've got that option. And then we've got a series of general settings as well. So as you can see there, we've got some basic system info, date, time, so if we want to change that out, we can. We can have it automatically go to daylight savings time. We've got our 12, 24 hour mode. We can change between English, French, Spanish, or Korean. We've got our QWERTY keyboard or base keyboard. We can go to different unit measurements. So we can go kilometers, miles, Celsius, Fahrenheit, etc. And then we can also just do a reset to bring things back to a factory default setting instead. And that's going to be the basic setup. Moving along the side, we've got a few different options for media. So we can jump between AM, FM, Sirius XM. And then we've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, if we had a USB stick with MP3s on it, that would also show up as an option as well if we were connected. Next up, we've also got our Sounds of Nature, which, listen to this for a second. So if you kind of like to drive around with more ambient noises, we do have that option, and we've got a few different things there. So a warm flyer pace. Like, that is so, so cool, and it's such a simple thing. I love the fact that Kia's got this built into their vehicles. We've got our UVO settings there again, notifications, and then we've also got our user's manual. So user manual, you literally just pull your phone out, scan the QR code, and it's going to launch you into the user manual online. And that is going to be the basics of the media screen. Well, folks, that was an in-depth look at the 2022 Kia Telluride media screen. What did you think? Great performance, a lot of flexibility, a ton of options. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your social networks. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and let me know. I'm more than willing to talk you through any problems that you might be having. And until I see you next time, take care.